I don't know how I'm going to win the Champions League with this side because they're in the second tier and can't get promoted. I received a message recently from Surprise Shirts and said, Luke, we are sending you a shirt and we want you to win the Champions League with the team that we have sent you. And here's the shirt that I have today. So let's crack this open and find out. Now, Surprise Shirts also told me that everything is looking quite new and lovely. And as we can see, I mean, a good thing I'm, I'm really glad with is that Although they have revamped everything, the tissue paper, the box on the inside is lovely. There's now a QR code which you can scan to add to your gallery so you can keep tabs on all the shirts that you've got from Surprise Shirts. They still stick with the Harry Bow. And as always, with an Omega Luke slash Surprise Shirts collaboration, the Harry Bow comes first, then the shirt. Fantastic this time too. Now the whole experience of opening a Surprise Shirt box has changed, including obviously that QR code, but the card now is coming out and that will tell us the club that we've got. I don't want to spoil that just yet, but this looks fantastic. So let's crack it open and see what team we are going to be winning the Champions League with. It's a black shirt. It looks quite fancy. I cannot say that I know what this team is straight away. Let's crack this one open. Find out who it's going to be and who is that? I mean, it's never good when I can't pronounce the team, but Cora Carminos, UAT. It's the away shirt for the 23-24 season. And this is a team in Mexico. I love Mexico. I went there on my honeymoon. Aww. Located in the city of Ciudad Victoria in the northeast of the country. They are called the Roadrunners. And they compete in Mexico's Liga de Expansion, the second division of professional football. So we've got to win the North American Champions League with a team in the second division of Mexico. Okay, we might have a serious problem here. I've just loaded up Football Manager. There's the team. There's the kit that I've just got right here. Look. But there might be a problem. And it's down to the league and the league rules. Because, yeah, I don't think I'm wrong here. I don't know how I'm going to win the Champions League with this side because they're in the second tier and can't get promoted. So I've got the shirt on now, the Caracamino shirt. And as you can see, it looks great. I love it when they do the little cuff things because I can use my big wrestler arms. But I had a look into it. Now, the second division in Mexico agreed with the top division in Mexico during COVID that they wouldn't do promotions for a few years to make sure no clubs would kind of disintegrate because of financial troubles. However, in Football Manager, it's never been changed. It will just carry on exactly how it is. You will never be relegated, never be promoted in Football Manager. So what I've had to do, as you can see here, is I've put Coracaminos in the top division. Now, even when they were in the second division, they weren't previewed to be like one of the best teams in there. So we are well and truly out of our depth in this top division. 2,000 to one to even win this league or come anywhere close in the Mexican league. So it's probably a really good job that there isn't any relegation, but we've obviously got to make sure we don't get ourselves sacked. The team itself is a two-star reputation, two-star training facility side. The players are okay. They're not amazing. We don't have a lot of players either. And we've got pretty much like a very average side in terms of players where nobody really stands out. We don't have like a star player. So this rebuild in terms of this club or trying to survive is going to be really tricky. I don't know how we're going to win the North American Champions League. To qualify for it is even just because confusing because, well, the Mexican League has an opening stage and a closing stage and you can win both. And then you, there's like two champions each year. But either way, I'm going to try my best to win Champions League of North America with this Caracamino side. I mean, we don't have, we got quite a bit in the bank actually, but we don't exactly have a lot of transfer budget. And yeah, I can't see this team winning something anytime soon. Best of luck to me. Now to build a team from the ground up, you need a good backroom staff. So I have signed Diego Forlan as a director of football. And the first signing that I have made is a free transfer when he's not even Mexican. A 38-year-old Uruguayan striker. And so with us being the complete underdogs in every match, I set up the team the best way I know how. The 4-4-2 with defensive wingers and try and utilize having a really strong, unbreakable midfield. And the boys in the first game surprised everybody in Mexico by pulling off an unbelievable victory in a 4-3 away win to Tigres. Now I know every game is not going to be like this. We're going to get some absolute tonkins at some point, but Tigres are a really good team in this league. In fact, they've still got Andre Pierre Gijnak, who's one of my all-time favorite football manager strikers, and they have a fantastic kit. I mean, I actually have that second kit there, the blue one. Is it as nice as this black one? You be the one to judge that. But either way, it's 
It's a 4-3 win in our first game in the top division. I can't ask for much more than that. And while we continue to upset the odds in the opening stage of the Mexican League, let me tell you why you need to be picking up your own surprise shirt. Now, with Football Manager 25 being delayed, now is the best time ever to be picking up a surprise shirt because you want to still be playing Football Manager. You just needed a team to be playing Football Manager with because Surprise Shirts has the best way of selecting your next Football Manager save. Once you've chosen your shirt and the surprise Size that you would like you can choose between standard fm edition or career mode edition now football manager players if you go for the fm edition any shirt that will be sent to you is from the base version of football manager but it gets better than that you can then decide through this selection option here how obscure you want your shirt to be if you're really looking for a challenge like i'm going for today then you can really go for it but of course surprise shirts does also have an option maybe you, there are certain clubs that you definitely don't want to manage like I do. And they've got you covered there too because you can literally select in this box, don't send me these leagues, these teams, or even a certain color that you don't want. Not to mention if you use my code 10LUKE at checkout, you get yourself an extra 10% off in discount. So you get your perfect football manager saved to set you up until FM25 and you get a little bit of discount too. But once you pick up your shirt, you can then head to the gallery and this is where you can search your shirt by either scanning the QR code that's in your box or going through and finding the shirt that you now own to add to your locker. There's a reason why I continue to work in with these fantastic guys. SurpriseShirts.co.uk is the best way of picking your next football manager save. So make sure you support them pick up a new shirt and get yourself a new football manager saving use 10 luke at checkout for the extra discount let's get back to korik and manos korik have you done your homework yet oh wait you're dyslexic done your yet homework have you you i'm answer hey talking me too one day I'll get the name right. As we cracked on with the first part of the league campaign, our form picked up quite a lot and we ended up finishing in fifth place in the league with Tigres, who we'd be at the start of the season, finishing in first. But this is when the league then gets even more complicated because despite finishing in first, Tigres don't win. No, then it goes into some kind of like playoff scenario where you play against eight of the other teams. I think even more can qualify through preliminary rounds to then decide an actual opening stage champion. And even then, there's a closing stage champion too. As I mentioned, there's two champions per season. And unfortunately for us, we come up against CF Monterey, who are very good in the Mexican League, and they defeated us 7-5 on aggregate, meaning that's where we ended up. However, the actual finalists were Monterey against Santos Laguna, who went on to win the whole competition. And so with that promising start, you'd like to think that in the second second half or the closing stage of season one we might be able to go on and qualify for the champions league already and maybe even pick up a mexican title well you would be absolutely wrong because out of the 17 games we played we only won one of them and we finished in 18th position with only six points well there is our snap back to reality and i can't help but thinking this won't be the first time we finish in that position and that is because despite us having 2.47 million pound in our transfer budget for next season Signing players with just a two and a half star reputation for this league is becoming quite tricky. Although we're giving it a bloody good go. There are some quality players that myself and Diego Forlan are trying to bring into the club. But I guess they're just not as quality as what the likes of Tigres would be signing. However, the best player that we signed throughout the summer is this man, David Martinez. And he's a Venezuelan 18-year-old player who's rated four stars current ability compared to the rest of our squad. And yes, he looks absolutely phenomenal. He goes in on that right-hand side in the defensive winger position. And up front, we've also got this man, Angel Lopez, who we've brought in on a free transfer, who's got three goals in five appearances so far after getting 22 goals in the Guatemalan League. And once again, the opening stage of the Mexican League has been really good. We play in this kind of weird Leagues Cup group after, which we actually got to the final and won against CF Pachuca, which is kind of amazing, really. And we even played against Lionel Messi's into Miami side and beat them 4-2 although we didn't actually play for them. And so we start the season after just five games with eight points. But as you can see, everybody else has played way more games than us. So hopefully we can find ourselves towards the top of the league in the opening stage this season. And for sure, we're definitely not going to finish in 18th as long as we keep this up. Although I should have just completely kept my mouth shut. How do we go on such a bad run 
and end up finishing in 18th place exactly where I said we just wouldn't finish. I mean, I didn't even think that would be possible, but we somehow pulled that off. I somehow jinxed the side and I don't know how we've just all of a sudden just become completely unable to play football. Thankfully, it wasn't as bad in the closing stage of the Mexican League. We finished in 12th place and picked up five wins. So it was a lot better than the opening stage. But of course, that means we're not finishing in the positions to go through to the playoff to decide the actual champion and decide who qualifies for the North American Champions League. And also, we are losing David Martinez, our best player who is joining Pachuca after agreeing to sign for them when his release clause was matched. Although for that one, I actually blame Diego Forlan, who I set out to take charge of the contract, so... That's on you, Diego. Luckily for us, we still have Angel Lopez, who scored 22 goals this season. He got no assists, but he is banging in the goals for us. That gave us roughly £1.5 million to spend in the transfer window, and we used it quite well, bringing in quite a lot of free transfers and actually started to spend some money with 300k being dotted around here and there for a few players. But our best player that I think we brought in was a free transfer from Sacramento Academy in John Gutierrez, an 18-year-old American center attacking midfielder or winger who comes in and already looks absolutely insane. He slots in quite nicely in that center attacking midfield role that we are utilizing right now and I think the team around him now is a lot stronger than what we was previously. We start the season fairly well. I think we have to set our expectations fairly low. The road runners were from the second tier. We've just put them up. We need a few seasons to kind of adjust. That freak opening stage that we had where we finally actually got to the the quarterfinal stage was i don't know a fluke maybe it certainly seems that way because in the opening stage of the third season we are down in 17th place but i guess it's better than finishing in 18th the closing half of that season though was much better and in fact we managed to qualify for that qualification playoff scenario stage we found ourselves in eighth place with seven wins in 17 games and after beating pumas 4-0 in the preliminary round to go through to the quarterfinals we beat monterey 4-0 in the first leg of the quarterfinals and hopefully put ourselves into the semis. But no, nope. spoke too soon again. We somehow lost 5-0. We've been very lucky to rely on Angel Lopez, who got another 22 goals this season. But John Gutierrez was decent, not amazing. He did play quite a lot of the games off the bench, though, and his development has been strong. I just don't quite know what we're going to do to progress this team to go further into the competition. We do have £1.57 million in the trans budget, though. But again, with our reputation slowly growing, we're unable to really sign the best players that we would like to bring in. And so we're kind of resulting in bringing in players that will hopefully take us to the next level. We did, however, bring in what I consider to be one of the best goalkeepers in the league, certainly that is is Mexican in Carlos Moreno and we've even given him the number nine shirt because I know how much you all love that. I switched things around tactically. We've gone for a still very similar style to what we were doing before but with two Segundo Volantes on support and John Gutierrez we're going to nail him into that shadow strike role to play as many games next season. And we were actually quite unfortunate in the opening stage. We won seven games finishing in ninth place and we went into the first preliminary round where we lost on penalties to Deportivo Guadalajara. But in the closing stage we were phenomenal Phenomenal. And in fact, we won on an unbelievable run and the team just seemed to really gel well together and scored a ton of goals. And we finished in first place with 11 wins after 17 games. But of course... That doesn't mean we're champions. It obviously means we qualify for the latter stages and go straight into the quarterfinal. It might also mean that we qualify for that North American Champions League. Either way, despite us being amazing in the league, we lost 4-1 on aggregate in that quarterfinal stage to the eventual winners, Club America. Again, Angel Lopez has been fantastic for us. 20 goals this season, but John Gutierrez has stepped up now that we've nailed him into that position. 12 goals and 12 assists this season in 37 games with the highest average rating the development is there it's just how long we can keep him some other really good players is israel rosas who we've brought in this season for roughly about 110k and he's been fantastic for us and again the development has been fantastic in that defensive winger role we've already began recruiting for this summer there's a couple of players joining on free transfers and we have the most transfer budget we've had yet with three million pound to spend and i think going into season 
season number five, we managed to spend the money really well, bringing in a number of players, all for less than 500k, and bringing in some fantastic talent that is going to improve this first team. But now there's some good news and some bad news. The bad news is we weren't able to replicate what we did in the closing stage last season. We finished in eighth place in the opening stage here. We went through the preliminary round, and we come up against Deportivo Guadalajara, who we finished three or on aggregate, but lost because they were one as the higher seed. The good news is, is that we have finally qualified for the CONCACAF Champions League and we have Herediano to face from Costa Rica in the first round. In which we cruise through that round winning 7-1 on aggregate and what I didn't realise is that they had Eric Torres playing for them and if you remember correctly he is a bit of a football manager wonder kid legend. And that set up a second round tie against FC Dallas of the MLS and after we managed to score one goal in the second leg we pulled it to make it 1-1 on aggregate and the game went to penalties. And with us scoring our fifth penalty FC Dallas needed to score and our keeper Moreno saved it. Progressing us through to the next round where we have to face yet another MLS team. This time it was Real Salt Lake and we have to come behind in the second leg when we go back to Mexico. And that's exactly what we managed to do. Scoring two goals and a 2-0 win and progressing through 3-2 winners on aggregate. Which meant we went into a semi-final against a third MLS team in Portland Timbers and this time we went away from home and picked up a 2-1 win. That winning goal in the first First leg was scored by Ignacio Russo, who we managed to pick up recently on a free transfer from Argentina, and he's got three goals in 15 games, but with two assists, and he's starting to pick up a lot of form. And in the second leg of the semi-final, we scored in the 96th minutes to prevent the game going to extra time, and that means we progress to the CONCACAF Champions League final at the first time of being in the competition, and we have a Mexican team to face in the final in either Pachuca or Tigres. The close closing stage of the league was okay. We finished in sixth place and that means we go directly into a quarter-final playoff. But of course, we've got a lot of important games coming up now. In the closing stage quarter-final, Ignacio Russo managed to bag two goals in the game against Club America, but unfortunately it was a 2-2 draw at home. And in the second leg, we literally couldn't do anything. We were battered by Club America, who defeated us 3-0 and 5-2 on aggregate. So now we go into the CONCACAF Champions League league final we've got Tigres to play and if we manage to win that we've won the CONCACAF Champions League before we've even become champions of Mexico and there's two champions every season. However, I think we can safely say that we are not going to be lifting that trophy on this day, as we were well and truly battered 6-0 against Tigres in the CONCACAF Champions League final. Once again, I feel like we've become so close to doing something and then really, really balls it up. And this season has been a weird one because John Gutierrez is the top scorer of the campaign with 15 goals and 11 assists. Israel Rosas actually got 12 as well. And Anasio Rusio, the new player that we have brought in, have picked up 11, meaning that Angel Lopez has kind of dropped off and out of favour. We have also been given £6 million and that's probably thanks to how far we've got in the CONCACAF Champions League. Although we really did struggle to spend any money in this league, it just seems like the quality of player was coming in thanks to free transfers like Anasio Russo. And after a good opening campaign, once again, we did not get very far, only reaching the quarterfinal before being knocked out by Deportivo Guadalajara. I don't know what it is, but as soon as we go to the knockout stage where somebody is declared champion, we just completely fold. The closing stage, we finish in fifth place this time round, and look, once again, it was a quarterfinal exit this time to Club America. We did somehow, and I don't quite know how the qualification works, still qualify for the CONCACAF Champions League and we progressed quite easily in the first round. That was thanks to a second leg 7-1 win and we won 7-3 on aggregate with Jorge Luis Lopez managing to score a hat-trick. He's in our B team. The next round, we were back in our element playing MLS teams, and it was a 0-0 draw at home in the first leg. Thankfully, though, with the score being 2-2 after scoring a penalty in the 90th minute, we had one more opportunity that Lucas picked up in the 95th minute to smash home a winner. And that incredibly late 
3-2 win means that we progress through to the quarterfinals. However, this time round, we come up against Deportivo Toluca, another team in Mexico. And although we dominated the first leg, we only drew 2-2. And unfortunately, this season wasn't going to be the one that we lift the CONCACAF Champions League either as we fall down 4-2 losers and 6-4 on aggregate. Russo once again was scoring the majority of our goals, getting 18 across the season and he's been fantastic but we need more from midfield and I feel like maybe this tactic is slowing us down slightly. Although maybe it's the players that we're putting into the system so I decided to start spending big. £1 million here on a good right midfielder. 725k on a fantastic centre midfielder. Juan Catu, another striker to add to our ranks coming in for 325k. £2.9 million on a new Mexican left back. The young guy has a lot of talent and is arguably one of the best talents in that position. And yet better still, a free transfer in Dan Elof, a Bulgarian midfielder who I think could be the best of the bunch. The opening stage was fantastic. We only lost two games, finishing in first position. But of course, that pesky knockout system meant that we got all the way to the final, but lost on a penalty shootout to Club America. They actually went on and done the double, winning the closing stage as well, where we actually dropped all the way down to 10th place. And if you look at the past winners, that's the first time that's going to happen for a long time. So can our season be salvaged by a good run in the CONCACAF Champions League, where we certainly progressed through the first round nice and easy against the Costa Rican side in Saprissa. FC Dallas was next on the cards, and we ended up winning 6-0 in the opening leg, meaning that the second leg didn't really make much difference. And yet we still won in the home leg, 3-0, meaning a 9-0 aggregate win. My hope every round is that we just keep coming up against MLS opponents. I don't think we've lost against one yet. It's the Mexican teams that I'm most worried about. We just can't seem to do very well in knockout competitions against them. And this one, Pachuca, has Myron Boadu, who scored the opening goal. Thankfully, however, we've got our own star striker, Inanacio Rosso, who has been fantastic and his belting run there manages to pull away with the equaliser. Boadu also scored in the second leg against this team and this time it was an equalizer very late on the game and it took the match to extra time and penalties and Russo stepped up to take our first penalty and missed but Boadu did the same for Pachuca he also missed but this penalty shootout seemed to go on forever until a Pachuca player stepped up and finally missed. And somehow we scraped through on penalties to the semi-final. And in that semi-final is another MLS team in Inter Miami. And it's been a long time since Lionel Messi has gone and retired. But we still managed to win 3-2. And we even managed to pick up a victory in the second leg. Taking us to the CONCACAF Champions League final for a second time. Where we have to face another Mexican side in Deportivo Nacaxa in the final. A game which went back back and forth until the scoreline read 1-1 in the 80th minute and Nakaxa managed to bag themselves a 2-1 win with a very tight angled finish. But there was still time on the clock for us to create an opportunity and a big chance and that's exactly what we did. Down the left hand side, cross came across and an own goal was scored to take the game to extra time. But the game went to a penalty shootout and this time we were nowhere near as good. And unfortunately, out of the three penalties we took, we missed two in our opponent didn't miss any. And it's our second CONCACAF Champions League final that ends with us not lifting the trophy. This season, we had a lot to be positive about, though. Inacio Russo scored 25 goals. We got 14 here from another free transfer signing that we picked up. And John Gutierrez, once again, is stepping up and putting in some good numbers as well. And we've got some new players coming through the door that could really help us in our pursuit of lifting that trophy next season. Over the summer, I spent big again and Probably my best signer was Daniel Norega, who comes in as a 20-year-old centre-back, again, Mexican, and he looks absolutely fantastic and goes straight into my first team. The other signing is Jaro Torres, £1 million, and he goes straight into our right midfield slot. Tactically, we are looking a lot better in defence, and Norega goes straight into the side, alongside a 20-year-old youth academy prospect who has a lot of potential. Opening stage, and we finish in sixth place, but guess what happened to us again in the quarterfinal? We lose because of that stupid 
rapid higher seed thing. But in the closing stage, we were even worse, finishing down in 10th place. And even though I think we have a better team right now, we were knocked out on penalties in the first preliminary round. But still, we qualify for the CONCACAF Champions League. Maybe there's a chance we can win it this time. Well, it was another victorious first round against Inter Miami, this time winning 2-1 on aggregate. And in the second round, we come up against FC Toronto and managed to bag a good advantage going into the second leg, winning 2-0. With a 1-1 draw, taking us through to the quarterfinal to play Charlotte FC. However, our winning run against MLS Sibes is now in question because Charlotte FC came to Mexico and they absolutely destroyed us. Winning 3-0, meaning we've got a lot to do in the second leg. And all we could muster was a 2-0 win, meaning we are eliminated and our run against MLS Sibes has come to an end. And so we're eight seasons in. We have yet to win even the opening or the closing stage of the Mexican League. And although we've come close to the CONCACAF Champions League, we haven't quite got our hands on the trophy yet. Squad-wise, though, this is probably the most disappointing season that we've had in a while, with only 13 goals from Russo and only 12 from Homenchenko. And other than that, it's been rather dire. Unfortunately for us, our keeper, Carlos Moreno, decided not to renew his contract and doesn't even have a club right now. Meaning we only had one goalkeeper at the club, so I decided to do what my dad would do best and sign three. We've got Kofi coming in on a free transfer. We've got Cristiano coming in, a young Mexican who's very good as well. And we have Thomas McGill, a Canadian goalkeeper who might just be our first choice. There were two other transfers that came through the door as well, including Rilla Dita, who is a decent centre-back, but age 33, just a good backup, to be honest. But Diego Ayala, £2 million, is going to be a starting striker for us, and he looks fantastic. Tactically, we have switched things around to a 4 triple 2 with a shadow striker, so we can still get Gutierrez in, but we can also get Russo and Ayala on the pitch at the same time. In the opening stage, we drew zero games, lost 6, won 11, meaning we finish in third place. And for the first time ever in the quarterfinals, we gain advantage of the higher seed rule. But the semifinals was as far as we got as Tigres beat us 1-0 in both legs. In the closing stage, we managed to finish in third place and we were drawn in the quarterfinals against second place Santos Laguna, who knocked us out 8-5 on aggregate after a 4-0 second leg win. So our focus turns to the Champions League, the CONCACAF Champions League, and it's New York Red Bulls who is our first opponent, and we defeat them in both legs to progress. Atletico San Luis is the team we had to face next, and... Diego Ayala is on form, scoring three goals across both legs. And again, we pick up the win. He even scored in the semi-final first leg in a 2-0 win against Deportivo Toluca. But his strike partner, Russo, got the only goal of the game in the second leg, meaning that we go through 3-0 winners into the CONCACAF Champions League final. But it's arguably the toughest task because we've got to face Club America. And of course, they have been absolutely dominating in the closing stages and the opening stages of almost every single Mexican league. But in this very tight game against Club America, it was our new sign-in, Diego Ayala, who stepped up first of all with his afro and smashed one into the bottom corner. And the guy has been absolutely on fire. And in the second half, things did not change. We eventually found him once again in the box and he managed to score again. I don't know how. Club America are the biggest and best team in Mexico right now for a reason, though, and they they weren't going down without a fight and they pulled one back in the 60th minute. But somehow we managed to hold on and Diego Ayala's two goals was enough and we managed to pick up the CONCACAF Champions League trophy. I mean, it only took us nine seasons, but we finally managed to get it done and Diego Ayala, 27 goals this season from the 20-year-old. He has unbelievable potential. He could turn out to be one of the world's best. Who knows? But for now, Corecamaminos... Probably didn't get that right again. Has managed to win the CONCACAF Champions League. The challenge that was set out by our friends at Surprise Shirts. And if you go to surpriseshirts.co.uk and use code 10LUKE at checkout, you get yourself 10% off and then you can pick your own FM edition box and that will choose your next Football Manager save. So you don't have to wait for Football Manager 25 before you can continue enjoying Football Manager over the Christmas period while we're waiting because of the delay. So thank you very much to Surprise Shirts for always providing the best types of videos. I really do appreciate it. Go and support them, guys, and you help support me as well. Make sure you're subscribed, and why not check out this video right here because my dad took over as Chelsea Director of Football while I was doing the tactics, and that ain't never going to be good, is it?